Chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, the kings. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been dreamed, warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
Makes Christmas by Neve Nicholson What makes Christmas? Is it the carols and the bells that ring clear each year? Is it the sparkly wrapping covering each lovingly wrapped present? Is it the sweet-smelling pines decked with tinsel and baubles? Is it the family dinners and crackers and coloured crowns? But Christmas has been different, and we start to ask that question. Now it's the people and the meetups and the laughing rosy cheeks. It's that one time a year when you can finally give someone a hug. We cannot define Christmas. There is no single word to describe it. No phrase or speech or sonnet. No line or song or play. Only that feeling when the snow drifts silently down. For me, Christmas meant being trusted with the oven dials once a year. Transfixed by the soft orange, I'd watched the magic I was told to believe flew above rooftops, but I held it in my hands, the only bit of you I had. For me, Christmas was a reprieve that was lost. Spice and chestnut faded from my memory, and when Charlie grew old enough to bake with me, as you had, the memories like decorations passed on, fell apart, and I just couldn't get the texture right, or the fruit, so it lay neglected on a Christmas Eve where only presents mattered, and my son felt like a clockwork toy, unwound and lost. So this Christmas meant walking those streets, like wiping dust off our copy of The Night Before Christmas and that silence before a community starts singing, with me outside your, your unwreathed front door. Slow crunch in the oak and a lost treasure beckons, Bright eyes were my fairy lights in the barely lit streets of Christmas past reignite. And what was hidden came back to me in the crawling cold that stung, how it existed between and within us, the fear of being sad. But Charlie wanted Christmas cake. I'd forgotten how to make it, Dad.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16, the shepherds. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The Toymaker. The lights turn on at the first dawn of the eve, and the shop is transformed to the land of make believe. The children line up, row after row, as the sun's early light reflects off the snow. They line up outside the Toymaker's store, hoping for trains, planes, and magic, and everything more. They wish and they ponder will they be missed? Will Jolly Saint Nick have whiffed on his list? What will he leave us under the tree? And how many presents will he have left for me? 
for my mothers and fathers, my brothers as well, my sisters and siblings, oh please do tell, what have you wrapped, sealed up tight? I hope they don't notice as I peek in the night. And then the doors swing open, all by themselves, and the toy shop is filled with so many elves, some short, some tiny, some incredibly tall, but the sea of smiling children brightens them all. They rush to the counter and line up all neat, sweating and panting from the store's fiery heat. Here comes the toy maker, the children all cheer, dressed in all red and followed by reindeer. And then it begins, he dishes out gifts, giving to each child, each person, each kid. But he cannot see the smile on their faces or see what toys are kept in the cases. He cannot see the joy of the living, but he continues to live through the spirit of giving. For me, Christmas never meant presents or snow. It meant fortune cookies. When my dad came home late on Christmas Eve, he brought not gifts or mince pies. He brought Chinese takeaway. For me, the smell of cold and the crunch of our dad's work boots felt like us, our family. And every Christmas morning, my sister and I paused before opening our presents, only to get our favourite part of Christmas for breakfast, fortune cookies.
John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Eternal Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
be able to welcome you all into St Peter's Church for the carol service this week. That hasn't been possible, but Christmas is not cancelled. We hear again the story of light shining in darkness, of hope in despair, and of love coming into the world. And so we hear a poem now by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. Let us pray. For those who are lost and broken and hungry, for those who are prisoners, exiles and refugees, for all places where there is no peace, and for each of us, our families, friends and homes, this Christmas, that we may know your light and your joy and your love, that our hearts may be filled with the music of the angels. And so we pray that the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child, will be with us all this Christmas, and that the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will be upon you and upon all those you love and pray for, this Christmas and always. Amen. Glory. 